Welcome back to the program. A major escalation today in a diplomatic row between France and Italy. France today recalled its ambassador in Rome after what Paris described as repeated baseless attacks from Italian political leaders. In a statement, the Foreign Ministry of France said for several months, France has been the subject of repeated accusations, unfounded attacks and outrageous declarations. This is unprecedented since the end of the war. To have disagreements is one thing, to exploit the relationship for electoral purposes is another. So, how did we get to this point right now? Here's some background. It's been a tough few months for France's Emmanuel Macron. His leadership under scrutiny as Yellow Vest protesters continue their campaign against the president. And if Mr. Macron was hoping for some neighborly support from Italy, he'll be sorely disappointed. His relationship with this man, Italy's Deputy Prime Minister Luigi Di Maio, deteriorated further this week as the Italian leader visited Paris to meet Yellow Vest leaders. Praising the anti-Macron movement, he took to social media saying, the winds of change have crossed the Alps. It's fair to say the French were not impressed. The foreign ministry releasing a statement saying, this new provocation is unacceptable between neighboring countries and partners at the heart of the EU. Whatever happened to love thy neighbor? And here with me to discuss this, so we have Ignacio Corral. He's an Italian MEP from the Five Star Movement. Ignacio. And we also have your news correspondent uh, still with us, Grégoire Lory. And back with me, Darren McCaffrey, our political editor. All right. You know, this is this is the, of seeing the Italian politicians. You were there, you said, in the picture yes, with I the yellow protesters. Picture. But just to add more background to this, this also started when um, Italy accused France of keeping Africa, Africa countries poor and yeah. therefore pushing Africans to come to Europe. And this is because they're using the CFA franc. So this is a currency that's backed by France from you know, pre-independence time. Just to put that background out there. Is, um, is Italy overstepping the line here? I will ask you, you were there meeting Yellow Vest protesters. <laughs> yeah. Why? Just... And are you not in, you know, interfering here? No, absolutely not. What I think now is that Macron is just a little overreacting because Luigi Di Maio was not that meeting as deputy prime minister, was a minister. He was there as a political chief of the Five Star Movement and we were meeting a group of the Gilets Jaunes, the R. I see that are preparing a list for the European election. So it's a political meeting that a leader of a political movement, as the Five Stars Movement, has all the rights to do. We have no intentions of, interfe of interfering with the internal affairs of France, as we don't want to interfere with the internal affairs of any country of Europe and of the world. The problem with Macron probably was started when he used, used the Italian election and the Italian government to mm. start his European, European campaign and many times he attacked the new government. So I think it's normal to have... So you think have... France is playing politics? I don't, I don't of, know. of course Gregoire, he's playing do you think he's politics. Playing politics here? I think it... Or overreacting. Well, I mean, what is it? I don't think... It's a little um, touch. Macron <laughs> overreacted. I mean, if you look at what uh, Matteo Salvini, the interior minister, said that Macron was a very bad uh, president, I don't know who start first. I mean, we're getting into a nasty situation and... Uh, it's something we've never seen before between France and Italy for, for decades. So it is, it is worrying. It is the launch of the European campaign. And sure. uh, that's, I think it, France had to do this, sort of, this diplomatic step. But isn't, isn't there an element of theatrics there, you think? Because using the words, this is the worst attack since World War II. I mean, that's a bit uh, much, no? So maybe, yeah, it may well be a bit much. Uh, but I agree with that uh, sentiment. But, you know, it, uh, the, this is an ongoing spat. Sure. It is clearly getting quite serious. People are getting very heated and emotional about it all. But I would come back to, I mean, it is interfering in yeah, domestic French meeting. politics. I don't, I don't understand how you can say it's not interfering. It's not interfering because they're preparing a list of, of, for the European election. So you would welcome, you'd welcome Emmanuel Macron as leader of En Marche going to Italy and, me, going, and talking to your political opponents? Let me ask you something. If Macron talks with Renzi and he does talk with Renzi, is he interfering in Italian domestic affairs? Is that is okay he, with you? If he does, for us, it's to okay. It's, it's, it's political, it's, politi it's politics, it's European politics, yeah, but, and but, Macron but, can yeah, have yellow, his agreement yellow, with Renzi, but, but, it's okay. But Matteo Renzi is not going around smashing up front windows, off not, shop windows. And being anti no, But it's not like, like all the gilets jaunes are smashing windows. This is something, this is something not correct. Well, they and were we were speak, vests. Yeah, there are some of them. We're not speaking with the violent part. We want to speak with the moderate part. We want to create a list and give an answer for 
for the demands that come but, from the French okay, people. We do, love the French okay, people. Do, they are our cousins and we don't want to have problems with the Yellow them. Vest protesters are anti-Macron. Yes, and Renzi is anti-five-star yeah, yeah, movement. Yeah, it's politics, so it's normal. If he speaks with our opponents in Italy, we speak with their opponents. But it's European politics. So, Here we all work together, and we do want to work together, France, to have a better Europe. But, this but, is, but you would okay. have to accept that some of the language involved... On both sides, but the On language... Both sides. But, but, yeah, but just because uh, you can accuse Macron of using, or some French politicians of using provocative language, doesn't mean that you then turn around and use the same language to attack them. The language on both sides has not... It, for cousins, as you just said, mm. it's not nice, <laughs> is it? All right. Cousins nice. fight. For, for, the, choice, fight, for the choice of words, I'd like to ask you, why did they choose those words, comparing it to World War II? I mean, I, again, I go back to my question. Isn't that a bit too much? It's a bit too much. So what is that? Is, is it a game? Okay. I think it's a heat re heated reaction, as you, as you mentioned. It's a bit too much, but maybe it's me in... Ma, uh, Emmanuel Macron's idea to, to show his stand in the European campaign. I mean, he is going to campaign from the liberal side against the illiberals. So for him, it's a way to divide a bit more the um, political landscape mm. between what he thinks uh, is the good side and the, the opposite side. You're saying liberal and no, no, illiberal. I think there, this is the interesting point, is that this is not necessarily a ride between France and Italy. Sure. Uh, though you know, there is ongoing tensions, um, and there has been, but this is fundamentally a row about a, someone who views themselves as a European liberal leader sure. against what he views as so the which brings us, of populism. Which brings us to the but theme of the I election. I mean, is, the, is this the kind of campaigning we're going to be seeing? Yeah, this is just so Europe is? European campaigning. And, and what I... And He's clearly enjoying it. <laughs> no, but, so what I, but what I say is, I mean, it's strange that we have to go and speak with the Yellow West, with the Gilets Jaunes, that they are a very, very big movement asking for things that don't work in France. So they're asking their president, Macron, to find a solution. And he doesn't speak with his people. And we have to, find, we have to so, try and find a solution kind of, together with them. That is interfering, because you're talking to them about what they want from their own about, government. No, about the European visions that we can if we can work together for a better Europe, for a different Europe. Of course, they don't agree with the Europe that Macron has in mind, so that's the point. Do you think it's going to get dirty? I mean, Darren. Uh, was... I think it will, because, you know, what, uh, what raises tensions and rhetoric and language and emotion uh, more than an election, and mm. we've got an election coming up, and as I said, this is a reflection um, of the battles that we're going to see play out, not just between France and Italy, yeah, uh, but in sure. different countries. But the and lines are clear. Different I think. regions across Europe over the next couple of months. All right, well, let's stay with Italy because the European Commission cut its growth forecast today to a five-year low. And this, after the most recent data, show that Italy fell into recession at the end of last year. And some are now saying that Italy could pose a risk to the rest of Europe. Now, in fact, my next uh, guest calls Italy a, quote, time bomb program to ignite. The Italian economist Mario Seminario joins us now. Thank you, uh, Mario, for joining us. All right. You said it's a time bomb program to ignite. That sounds scary. How worried should we be? Well, um, Italy is, is um, really a time bomb in the heart of Europe, but uh, um, I have to say that uh, maybe uh, there is uh, a situation that will be managed because, uh, do I say this, because uh, uh, why do I say this? Because when uh, Italy will have a situation um, like uh, the one uh, we had in uh, 2011, uh, we can have uh, a um, technician, an economist, uh, that uh, will use wealth taxes to keep our, the solvability of our country. So uh, we are not Greece in the sense that uh, the Greeks had no wealth, and, but Italy has a lot of wealth yeah. to be taxed to keep uh, uh, the Italian debt payable on an ongoing basis. But obviously this is a problem in the sense that Italy is getting poorer and poorer. So Mario, I'd like to ask you, you said Italy is not Greece clearly, but could Italy be worse than Greece in, in terms of if it fails, it will be worse for the Eurozone or for, for Europe? To, to, to fail, Italy uh, have, has to uh, repudiate uh, the, the payment uh, of its debt. Uh, I don't see this as likely in the short term. I mean, Italy will suffer 
just like Italy suffered in 2011 when Mr. Berlusconi was at the government. But uh, um, we had Mr. Monti, a technocrat, who uh, used a huge increase of taxation just to keep the country solvent. And the same will happen this way, because uh, the um, Italian current government right. is deliberately driving the country toward a serious crisis. Well, that with is something I'm going to put to, absurd policy. Yeah, to our guests. Thank you very much there, economist Mario Seminario, for talking to us. Well, he said the current government is going to bring the Italian economy it's to the nice. ground. Oh, it's very nice that he was referring to the government of Mr. Monti. And in to the 20... current government as well. No, but let me, let me okay. explain something. When Monti came and replaced Berlusconi, I don't have any kind of admiration for Berlusconi, but uh, Monti brought his uh, economical recipe that made the uh, deb Italian debt growing, that made the unemployment growing, that made the Italian economy not uh, better than before. And after that, there was no uh, solution. So what, what, the, what is the lesson from the Monti period? That put austerity right. when you are in a recession is not a solution. So what we did now, okay. the problem of an Italian economy that you were speaking now sure. before is related with the last government measures because it, they are the yeah, but we're talking about the, the last solutions last. you're putting this forward. Is, you want to spend more first, give, given this the This is debt the first budget has. made by the new government is now. So our economical recipe is different well, than the other. So we are well, costing okay. a bet. This is definitely, definitely a problem of successive governments. On that, everyone can sure. agree. Italy, in real terms, has not grown since 2000. Uh, that's but it. the problem it's is how do you years. get out of it? It's 20 so the, years. So the question is, the question is, and we've had this discussion before, and my point of view is this, which is clearly what has been tried to date has not worked. Like the Five Star Movement and the League are uh, breaking free from the shackles, they would say, of austerity, and they're going to spend money. That is currently spooking mm. the market, and in part is leading to at least uh, uneasiness amongst investors. However, okay. it might work. All I would argue is it needs to try something. No, it may not work. And if it doesn't work, you have to accept it. Is it a failed. time bomb? Just a quick yes or no. Is it Absolutely. a time bomb? Uh, Absolutely. I mean, if it but, doesn't work, yes. Okay. But it's, All right. Polit it's what politicians should do, no? If, that re if a recipe doesn't work, you have to change the recipe. Take risks. That's what, that's what <laughs> well, we're doing. Well, it is a risk, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, all right. Coming up on the program, a lot more for you. We want to hear from you. Is France overreacting or is Italy provoking? Stick around in the next hour because we want to hear your opinion on all of our questions. And uh, here's how you can get in touch with us. The contact information is on your screen. You can call us at 0800-3333-7002. Email at rawpoll at euronews.com. And you can join the debate on Twitter, Facebook. Use the hashtag rawpolitics. And all our lines are open. <laughs>